Hey guys, the Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson three in my Bourbon School. And uh, as always, I'm keeping myself hydrated just to make sure. Better safe than sorry. And for this lesson, I've opted in for a barrel dovetail. If you've never tried that before, seriously give it a try. This is a fantastic whiskey. Um, pretty high proof, 124 of my version here. And then it's a whiskey finished in rum, port and Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Really, really delicious. So, cheers, y'all. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, lesson three. So, before I get started, there's a special message here. Nerd alert! Yeah, I know, nerd alert. So, this is a lesson that should probably have taken me two minutes to finish. But I think we're going into the 15 minute range here. Sorry about that. I sort of got a little bit carried away on the details. So if you're super, super focused on the results here, you can maybe fast forward and go to the last minute or so of the video where I have the conclusion here. But if you're into details, you should maybe hang around for a little bit. All right. So where would one go to find out which kind of grains are allowed for making whiskey, at least in the United States? you would think you would go to the authorities, right? So that's exactly what I did. So if you can see here on my left, the logos here, it's for the Alcohol, Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, also known as the TTB. And they're actually a subdivision of the Department of the Treasury, which is why the two logos look similar. So I went to the TTB first and on their website, um, they have all kinds of cool stuff. And they even have something called the BAM which is the beverage alcohol manual. So I looked through that and couldn't really find anything. So you can go in yourself and look at ttp.org. Not a lot of helpful information there if you want to know exactly what kind of grains you can use for whiskey. So then I went to the parent, if you will, the Department of the Treasury. They have um, a plethora of information in there. Um, they have a special area called the Code of Federal Regulations or the CFRs. Um, if you search or if you know in advance, this will be Title 27. That is um, sort of uh, dealing with alcohol, especially Chapter 1 of, uh, of uh, Title 27. And um, if you go in there on ecfr.gov and you scroll a little bit like you can see I've done here, um, there is a lot of information. For a nerd or geek like me, it's really, really interesting, all the information. And believe me, uh, I've actually read every single line. Yeah, I know, get a life. Um, but even there, I couldn't find any information about what kind of grains you could use for making whiskey. So I guess the initial conclusion before we dive into the details are, will be that all types of grains are actually allowed, at least in the United States, for making whiskey. So I thought the next question we should then tackle would be, what exactly are grains? I don't know if you know this. And by the way, if there are any grains experts out there that just happen to stumble upon this video, uh, you just need to know I'm, I'm doing sort of like a very, very high level overview of, uh, of the grains. So there are a lot of more details in this just to make sure that the video is sort of, sort of doesn't run into the two hour range. That would be ridiculous, right? Okay, so if you look at the Wikipedia for the, if you trust that source, um, on, on what a grain actually is. And I'm going to do something a little bit unusual for my videos. I'm actually gonna read from the slides here to make sure I get this right. So as you can see here, it's a small, hard and dry seed with or without an attached hull or fruit layer harvested for human or animal consumption. So that is the definition of a grain. So you would think it's very specific, probably, but it's not very helpful. It doesn't really say a lot about what a grain is from this specific sentence. So I thought I would dig a little bit further into this. So I would say in, in reality, at least commercially available, there are four different types of grains out there. So I'm gonna tell each of them really quickly, and then we'll go into some examples. The first group, they're actually called cereals and um, they are part of the grass family. And I would say most of the whiskies out there are made from uh, cereal grains. So you can say, yes, the whiskey we're drinking right now, it's actually sort of a grass whiskey. Who would have thunk, right? Mm. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Anyway, and technically, if you want to give in further, uh, it's sort of like an indehiscent 
fruit. And what this weird word means is that it it's sort of unlike other fruit that sort of open up and spread their seeds. This is a one seed fruit and it's sort of contained with the husk around the kernel or the seed itself. And that is sort of like a grain. So grain is, you know, technically uh, both in the grass family and also a fruit, at least if they're cereals. And yes, as you can see here, I write on the slide, uh, it did give, give the name to breakfast cereals because breakfast cereals are made of, up of processed cereal grains. So there you have it. And then there's another weird category, pseudo cereals. I guess it's sort of the black sheep of the cereal family or something. And the offense that these guys made was that their leaves are broader than a normal grass. So that means that they cannot really be part of, of the grass family. Um, so, so that's how you define pseudo cereals. And when you see some of the examples on the next couple of slides, you know, on what they actually are, you'll see that they are sort of a little bit different from your normal cereals. And then the third group, uh, it's called legumes. And in case there are any French people out there, yes, um, it's actually pronounced legumes in, in the US. It's obviously inspired by the French word of legume, which means vegetable. I presume it's it's inspired by that. But they also have this weird name pulse uh, if they're dried. So you have something called legumes and then they dried and then they're called pulse. But I didn't make this up. So that's actually what they're called. And they also, uh, you know, um, grown for consumption is exactly like cereals are, but it's also used for soil enhancing manure. So there you have it. So it's going to be interesting to see on the next couple of slides if someone actually went through the length of making whiskey based on legumes. All right. And then the final one, I'm not going to cover it here, but just for, uh, you know, fullness here. There are also these um, type of grains called oilseed grains. Um, they're not made. Uh, you cannot really make whiskey with them because they are, hence the name, filled with oil in the kernels um, or the grains. And, you know, I see a couple of examples here, mustard or rapeseed or canola, which is obviously used a lot in in, in making food and stuff like that. So there you have the four um, categories. And if we look at the three sort of more relevant categories, I have a couple of examples here for the cereals, pseudo cereals and the legumes. Let's tackle cereals first. And this is familiar territory, of course. So here you have it, you know, the corn, the rye, the wheat and the barley, but also a couple of grain types that you don't see too often um, with uh, whiskey, you know, oat and spelt and rice and triticale or triticale, or triti, well, I mean, so I actually searched the internet to figure out how I should pronounce it word, this word. You do it as well, no one really knows. So I'm gonna use the slang of tricale, just like they say in New Orleans, down in New Orleans, I'm gonna use tricale because it's easier for me uh, to remember. And some of the people in the industry actually use that sort of slang, if you will, tricale. And then millet, uh, and these lists, by the way, are not exhaustive, it's just examples of the most, uh, most known of these. Pseudo cereals, so apparently the black sheep of the cereal family are amaranth. And if there are whiskey geeks out there, amaranth may ring a little bit of a bell. I'll get onto that in a second. And also um, buckwheat or quinoa and chia. Um, these are types of pseudo cereals. And if you wonder what are those legumes or pulse there, examples are very well known, I guess, chickpeas, uh, you know, lentils peanuts and soybeans, which are of course used in the entire world for almost anything, right? So these are sort of the examples. So what I'll be showing you now um, are examples of whiskey products out there that are not using the usual suspects because the usual suspects, are of course, the four top ones in the cereal family. I predict that in the entire world, 99% and it's probably closer to 100 than 99 um, of all whiskey is based on these four grain types. This may change in the future, but right now the vast, vast majority of whiskey out there is based on these four grain types. So there you have it. So let's look at the oddballs out there. Okay, first one, uh, and I will say examples of everything I'm going to show you in the next couple of slides together are less than 1% or at least around 1%. So here are a couple of bottles from a manufacturer in Illinois, Chicago specifically, called Cobal. Great company, makes really interesting product. And as you can see here on the left, um, it's it's a millet whiskey and sort of between me and the millet whiskey, there's an oat whiskey there as well. They can be bourbon, so they can even be rice. It just means that there are you, they put millet or oak in the mash bill. They could also decide to 
only put oak in there or only put mill millet in there. I'm presuming since they don't write anything else, this is 100% millet whiskey and 100% oat whiskey, but actually uh, they don't really tell at all about these products, at least on the label. All right, next up is buckwheat and quinoa. And you can see two products again from the same manufacturer, Corsair. They've done a lot of crazy stuff on the whiskey world. And, and I, you know, salute that. It's always nice when people go out of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the normal path. Um, here's a quinoa um, uh, whiskey and also a buckwheat whiskey. And, and again, uh, they are not completely these, at least these products made from 100% of these uh, grains. They just added those into the mash bill. And moving on again with some of the more exotic ones here. I promise to go, come back to Amaranth, especially if you see the bottle just next to me here. Um, E.H. Taylor, one of the many products from Buffalo Trace. A couple of years ago, they came out with this uh, bottle called Amaranth Grain of the Gods. And everyone went bad shit crazy and bought everything and now it's like 1800 bucks you know on the secondary market it's completely crazy and it, the only thing that they really did it's a bourbon and they just added a little bit of the amaranth grain to the, the mash bill right so yeah there you have it fomo for you right there and then on the far left there very unusual i think i only managed to find this one product is from oregon uh, stone barn uh, they make a spelt whiskey uh, a little bit unusual I'll never try this product uh, if you tried it, please leave a comment. And then I think I'll stop after this. Uh, this uh, Tri-Kale um, whiskey from Dryfly. Um, um, they also make interesting stuff. And then the one uh, just next to me here um, uh, called Whisper. Uh, that's a rice uh, whiskey. It's actually made from 100% rice uh, grain. So pretty interesting right there. So that is some of the um, interesting whiskeys that use a couple of grains that are a little bit out of the normal the comfort zone. All right, I did leave one out. That is chai, or however you pronounce that. Um, I really searched, I really did. And I came up with nada, silp, nothing. So if you can find a whiskey out there based on this grain, let me know, I haven't been able to find one yet. And then, of course, uh, as I also promised, the legumes. We already showed you this, so I already showed you this list here. You know, the chickpeas and the soybeans and the lentils. So how many products, whiskey products, do you think I managed to dig up based on legumes, which is completely legitimate grains to use for whiskey? Also here, I came up with absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, so if you ever come across a product based on soybeans or lentils, and I know you're thinking, why would someone make whiskey based on these legumes? Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just trying to find out, right? So interesting, even though they're legal, no one has gone there. So if we should come with some kind of conclusion here, I would say I've, I came up with four things that sort of sums this video up, right? Number one would be, all types of grains are allowed technically. I haven't found any evidence on the TTB website or the Department of Treasury website that tells me otherwise. The second thing is, of course, and I think this will be probably be true for a long time, is that 99% of the grains out there, of the whiskies out there, are made from those four uses suspects. So corn, rye, wheat, and barley. And also, even though people are dabbling into those pseudo cereals, you know, the oats, sorry, the, the amaranth of this world, it hasn't really had any traction yet. And it also seems like the fi final conclusion here, no one really makes whiskey based on these legumes, at least not what I've been able to find out. So there you have it. Um, now you know a little bit more about which kind of uh, uh, grapes, uh, sorry, which type of grains you can use for making whiskey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and listening. Cheers.